Hello everybody, this is Backblast, here we are on Battlefield 1 and I just wanted to do a brief introduction to the game just to sort of give you an idea of um, how to get into the game and, and what sort of things you should be doing. So, um, what we're going to look at first is, this is the initial screen when you first start off and there's some shortcuts here and there's lots of titles here and there's things down here and it's all very complicated, there's loads of things to do here. Now basically, um, this bit is like it's like a, a sort of news thing and, and different things come on but you can also get um, new weapons and things but you, you need to pay for them uh, they, they usually have some tips for playing certain maps and they're pretty good um, and it, it sort of tells you which are your favorites and things like that so across the top this is the one that you're going to use the most and it's going to be probably multiplayer now the campaign is a single player game um, and once you go into that it tells you um, which, which bits you can go into or if you go into multiplayer so multiplayer is the one that you really want to be going into you've got various options of how to get into a game the other thing you're going to look at is your soldier now your soldier it tells you how many weapons and things you've unlocked it's quite useful to have a look at the medals because usually there's a medal that, um, that there are some that are uh, um, I don't know, they're promoted, that's probably the best word, they're promoted every week and it tells you what you need to do. So for example, if you're playing Rush quite a lot, then it might be good to go for that one or this one says kills with sidearms and SMGs, so you want a, a character that plays with those. Vehicle damage for example, uh, I'm currently playing with that one. So let's go back, this one to go back here, so this will take you on to here. So right. Um, the other thing you can do on soldier is you can customize your soldier as well so you can change the various weapon loadouts and things like that that he's got um, which will come in useful in a bit once you actually get a bit of experience and a, a bit of money together because you earn some credits in the game so and we're not talking about real money this is credits in the game that you can use to spend on various weapons and things so what you get is um, a list of your um, loadout. So these are the four different character classes that you can play. Um, assault, Medic, Support and Scout. Now, I prefer to play as a support and we're going to be doing a support video next after this one just to tell you a, a bit, about, bit more about that. And if you click on the weapon it tells you which others you can unlock. So I've got some credits here which are earned in game so I can unlock these other weapons and it tells you about the weapons here so at the moment I tend to play with either um, the telescopic here or the trench now the reason I play with the trench is it's got 600 rate of fire which so it's very quick but the hip fire is very good it, it, I don't tend to uh, have it spraying all over the place whereas the telescopic um, again has a, it's a good rate of fire on it but with the telescopic obviously it's got a telescopic sight so if I'm on a map where I think I'm gonna be lying down using a telescopic sight I use that if I'm gonna be running about I use that one so that's what we tend to use so let's choose that for now you can change them in game um, it's the same with the revolver again I can unlock more so you know it let's say for example that I wanted to unlock um, Let's have a go at a sh one of these shotguns up here, maybe. So let's have a look at a shotgun. Um, what different shotguns have we got? So this one's got a lot of accuracy. This one's got an optical sight on it. And this one is, it's got a bipod. And they all fire about 480. Uh, I've already unlocked that one. So let's have a look at one of these two. So if I choose that, it, it compares. These are the stats for this gun. What what happens with the suppressive? It's a bit more control on it, and this one's got um, less accuracy. Why would I go for that? Because it's got an optical sight on it. That's why. Um, let's go for the suppressive. So we can unlock that, and it takes off the 200. Okay. So there you go. So I've unlocked a new gun, but I'm not going to play with that. We're going to put the trench on for now. Uh, same with the sidearms. You can unlock those. And as you get experience with the other classes, so for example, I'm playing here as a support, and I'm a rank 9. When I get to rank 10, this will unlock. So if I'm using that pistol, it will have added benefits here. If I get to rank 10 on the assault class, 
then this will unlock and it's the same there for the um, uh, what's that one that's a scout that's the scout there are other gadgets you can use gadgets here and um, I'll show you the ammo crate and the mortar um, I tend to use an ammo crate all the time in this slot I don't change it for anything else uh, an ammo pouch is a small pouch to just throw at somebody which I don't see the point. You can plonk an ammo crate down and many people can run past it and get ammo off it. Um, you can sometimes take a repair tool, which is good if you tend to go in vehicles a lot. I don't. And the you quite often see the crossbow launchers used. I, I die from those quite a few times. So they're pretty good. So you'll notice they're all unlocked. Um, so I can swap in between them during a game. Let's keep with the ammo crate for this one. For this one, um, I sometimes carry a launcher and I sometimes carry the mortar. Um, it, it's entirely up to you what you want to do. Um, again, this is better if you're close up and this is better from a distance. Um, and again, on grenades, I tend to swap them between the gas, uh, incendiary and impact. So, you know, by all means, swap around whichever you like. The melee, I'm not very good with melee. I don't tend to use it very much. You need to get very close to people and that's something I really don't like. And uh, we're going to stick with that for now. So incendiary uh, and whatnot. So that is basically how to set up your soldier. So again, if you were on something like a, a medic, go and find the weapon you like, and these will all unlock as you as you get better with the medic. Um, so your your weapon it might be a, a good weapon to start off with, but then the sweeper when you start unlocking things might turn out to be a much better weapon in the long run so you know you need to have a look at, at what you're playing with um, sidearm again you know you might have the best one but as other things unlock you might find that you're you're better off with one of the others um, medical crate again instead of a bandage pouch so you can just help people you pop the crate down people can wander about uh, gadget 2 medical syringe so if somebody dies on the battlefield you can revive them which is the best thing to do as a medic um, and again your grenade is entirely up to you so let me just take you back to my support and I'll tell you why I use these I've already mentioned why I use these two guns so one's for long distance with the telescopic sight on and trenches for close up and it gives me better hip fire so um, but they both got a high rate of fire um, the damage isn't massive but because it sends a lot of bullets out you are quite likely to hit with a few rather than one or two. Um, the revolver, I don't use it very often, but this is the one with the highest damage, I think. Yeah, I think this is the highest damage revolver. Uh, and again, that might change once these are unlocked. In fact, yeah, that one, the number three revolver, has got a higher damage if you look on the right. It, the damage goes up with the, with that particular revolver. So when, once I get these things unlocked, that would be a better one, if you're going for damage, that is. Um, I've mentioned the ammo crate, um, it's better to give people lots of ammo when you're on the field and the reason I use the air is that um, you can you can hit people from a long distance away and it's got a, a big area blast um, whereas a HE once it lands you need to be bang on but it will do more damage and it also does damage to vehicles this one does as well but not as much as the HE uh, repair tool is good for if you're in vehicles a lot so once it's damaged you can nip outside and repair the thing so that it doesn't blow up so it's good if you if you do send, spend time with vehicles crossbow launcher is like a um, uh, it's like having a, a mini grenade launcher so you can well do that as it shows on the video there on the right so again, you know, you'd need to be fairly close to somebody, which you can be. You can be. You you do get close to people. So let's stick with my mortar. And as I said, I change between the grenades. Usually the gas or the incendiary. Um, the impact grenade uh, is used quite effectively, as is the anti-tank grenade. Uh, and um, I've used all of these at, at one time or another. Smoke grenade's very good for cover. So if you capture a point, pop a smoke a smoke grenade. That way, if you're defending that point, they won't be able to see where you are. So look at the screen on the right, it shows you, you throw a grenade, you can you can drop it next to yourself. Nobody will be able to see where you are, so you're capping a point or, or defending that point, you can stay hidden until uh, the smoke clears, which is good. So 
always useful. Right. Um, oh, by the way, the uh, the gas grenade does a similar job in that it's a poison gas grenade, but it can cover you if you're wearing a gas mask. You can stay fairly well hidden in, within one of those. So let's keep keep with the incendiary. So what do we do now? So we've found we've set up our soldier. What we do now is we go on to multiplayer because I don't want to do the campaign. We want to do multiplayer. Now you've got various different options. So um, you can go to quick match and it will get you into any of the games and it, it, it tends to match you with people of a similar skill level if you wanted to go for example um, into like a, an operation you just click on that and you can then choose where you want to go when you get used to the maps uh, you'll get an idea so for example I don't like oil of empires because um, I don't like that open setting. I do like the Iron Walls and the Kaiser Schlacht. I really don't like the Conquer Hill either because it's it's too it's too um, dense jungle, um, and I, I'm not that keen on that. But uh, those two are my favourites. I do play Oil of Empires as well. In fact, I play all of them. The reason I play all of them is I tend to use Quick Match. I've never really used server browser or custom games. If you've got um, a particular browser you want to join maybe your friends play on a specific browser then you could maybe get on with them using that or you can start up your own game uh, or, or find other custom games that you can join so let's go to quick match and it gives you the options so the last thing we're going to cover is what are the differences in the games so um, they're, they're all similar so let's just have a quick look so conquest first one is capture the flag so you'll have a map with let's say five different flags on it you have to go and stand near that flag to capture that flag if you capture the flag it turns your colour you usually get some sort of benefit or bonus from it if you capture all the flags you usually win the game and you just need to keep killing enemies and, and doing that domination is the same um, but it doesn't have the big vehicles in it so whereas conquest will have uh, the airplanes and tanks and things like that domination doesn't um, I'll come back to operations in one moment because my next video will be an operations video um, a rush um, is <sighs> it, it's, it's a little bit like capture the flag but you need to destroy telegraphs to progress through the territory what you can do is, if you're defending, you can use a telegraph, and if you stand near it for a while and, and press the E key for a while, it will um, give you the option to call in an artillery strike. Uh, you don't control the artillery or where it lands, but it, it just bombards the enemy. Um, if you're an attacker, you need to destroy them, and if you destroy them all, you win. Um, team deathmatch um, is just the number of kills. It's just a, a massive all-out war, just shooting, shooting, shooting. There's no uh, destroying of, of telegraphs or anything like that. And war pigeons is quite an interesting one, actually. Um, there will be a pigeon somewhere on the map. You have to go and collect that pigeon. And then once you've got the pigeon, if you crouch down, you can then tie a message to it and release it. Obviously, while you're crouched down, you can't shoot because you're attending to the pigeon, so your teammates need to defend you. So once you capture the pigeon, go and find somewhere safe. Um, the enemy will be looking for you, and you will be on the map. It will show you on the map. It always shows where the pigeon is. And um, then hopefully you can release it. And the enemy can still shoot it out of the sky if they're good enough, but um, if you release, it's usually three. Uh, if you release three pigeons, you win. And that's it. It's the first team to do that. So if you shoot the guy with the pigeon, um, you can then nip over and pick up the pigeon. So that's that. So the last one is operations, and this is my favourite. And the reason that I've left this to last is, in my next video, which will be coming up very soon, I will show you how to play operations, um, and I'll show you how to play operations as a support. So um, I hope you join me for that. But in the meantime, this is where you have a massive map and there's usually two or three bits that you need to attack so it will say um, attack the the old church or attack this particular bunker or whatever and you usually get two or three and you go and attack the, the farmhouse or whatever it is and capture the flag in there if you capture both those two flags at the same time 
then the war progresses down the battlefield. So it's like you've won that territory. Um, you then need to carry on right to the very end where there's usually quite a difficult thing to capture like a, a castle or a, a, there's a there's a stately home and behind it is a, a railway station which you need to get to. Um, so it, it's sort of like there's one team attacking, there's one team defending and it's very good. It'll be in my next video and I'll show you that as support. I hope this has been helpful so you should know where to go. So when you first get into your battlefield have a nip onto the soldier, have a quick look at which gun you'd like, there'll only be a few unlocked to start off with um, and then once you're happy with that click on multiplayer uh, click on quick match and choose whichever you want and that'll take you straight into a game I hope you enjoyed playing Battlefield 1, I hope you join me for my next video I've been Backblast, I'll see you next time